Good evening everyone. My name is Tamika Laljan and today I will be discussing social stratification. Good day class. Today we will be talking about social stratification. Now what is social stratification? Sociologist and humanistic scholar Petrim Sorkin comprehensively defined social stratification as the differentiation of a given population into hierarchically superposed classes. Huh? But miss, what does that even mean? In simpler terms, social stratification is when people within a society are ranked into different levels in a social hierarchy based on various socio-economic factors. Now these factors can include but are not limited to things such as wealth, both inherited and acquired, status, occupation, income, and education. Social stratification is both universal, meaning that it happens everywhere in every society, and variable, which means that it would differ across different societies. In modern Western societies, such as our society, there are three classes which make up the social hierarchy. It includes the upper class, the middle class, and the lower class, which we more commonly call the working class. Divisions also exist within each class. For example, someone in the middle class can be further stratified into upper middle or lower middle class. Very interesting indeed. But what does this have to do with education? That is actually a very good question. In relation to education, social stratification is both affected by and can affect education. Let me explain what this means. Firstly, we'll talk about how social stratification is affected by education. In our and in most societies, a person's level of education can determine which jobs are available to them. It can also determine their income and in turn have an effect on which social class they are placed in. Therefore, the higher the education, the higher the income, the higher their social class. Now, let's spend some time discussing how social stratification affects education in Trinidad and Tobago. Firstly, after extensive research, it is safe to say that generally, a person's social class, or where they are placed in the social hierarchy, plays an important role in determining their children's access to quality education. Factors such as income, race, and religion can determine the type of schools your children have access to and ultimately determine their success. What do I mean by this? Well, according to information generated from the Ministry of Education's release of the top 200 SEA students in 2019, the following results were obtained. Of the 200 students, 58.5% of them attended religious or denominational schools as we know it. 22% of the 200 students attended private primary schools and only 19.5% attended government schools. In the following year, in 2020, the top three SCA students included two students from religious or denominational schools and one student from a private primary school. And following the trend in 2021, of the top three SDA students, two of them attended private primary schools and one attended a religious denominational school. The specific reasons as to why these schools continue to outperform government schools are not determined However, some possible reasons could be their greater access to resources as compared to government schools, the class size, teacher qualifications, etc. Now the question is, do you think that parents belonging to the working class or even the lower middle class can afford private education for their children? The answer is no. 
since most of the people in this class work for a minimum wage or a little above that range.